Hi, I'm Anandan. I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois, and I'll be presenting our recent preprint, um, which you can find with this QR code here, titled Farm Pros a Deep Learning Approach to Predict Condition Specific Gene Expression in Fungi. So, why do we want to uh, predict condition specific gene expression? It's because um, we want to be able to predict how an organism or a cell will react to different environmental conditions. And we focus on fungi in particular because one, um, they have simpler mechanisms for gene regulation compared to other eukaryotes. And two, being able to predict condition specific gene expression in fungi is particularly important for um, metabolically engineering fungi to optimize the production of um, desired chemicals and industrially scalable conditions. So what are the existing frameworks for predicting gene expression? One, you have um, the framework where you start with the promoter sequence and you predict average mRNA abundance from that. The issue with this is that, as we mentioned in our title, we want to predict condition-specific expression and not the average across a wide range of conditions. Um, and this is what the first two papers here are doing. The third paper addresses the condition-specific problem by not only taking promoter sequences, but also um, TF expression levels and TF binding information to predict condition-specific mRNA abundance. However, the issue here is that TF binding information is not readily available for non-model species, and we actually care about some non-model species. So in our paper, what we do is we take just the promoter sequence of target genes and condition-specific expression of transcription factors to predict the condition-specific expression of target genes. And we use convolutional layers to extract um, sequence motifs from our promoter sequences, and we combine this information with information extracted from transcription factors um, to make our predictions. The hope is that these convolutional layers will extract uh, motifs that are relevant to TF5. Um, so for our um, expression levels that we predict, first we run um, the raw gene expression through co um, coefficient of variation filters because we don't want to predict um, expression levels of genes that don't vary across different um, conditions. And we also um, perform z-scoring so that for each gene, um, we end up with um, a distribution with um, a zero mean and standard deviation of one, so that when we're predicting condition-specific expression, what we're doing is we're predicting differential expression with regard to that average um, expression level. So we ran from pros on three different fungal species, um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Neurospora crassa, and Schenkia orientalis, and we found that from pros predicts condition-specific gene expression um, accurately for all three species. What you see here is the correlation coefficient between predicted and true expression levels for withheld elements. Withheld elements just means that the model is being trained on combinations of genes and conditions that is not seen during training. Um, but it may have seen um, the genes and conditions separately during training, just not together. Um, so we wanted to also address the more difficult question of what if the model sees a completely new condition or a completely new gene? So we ran those experiments as well, and we saw that for withheld conditions, there's a slight drop, but it still does really well. With withheld genes, there's a more significant drop, but we still do pretty well. Um, especially since the random expectation is just zero. Um, so like I mentioned, one of the advantages of the is that you don't need to give it TF binding information. But we were wondering, does it learn the TF binding information by itself? So what we did is for each convolutional kernel in the first layer, we extracted um, motifs um, for each kernel, and we tried to match those with known um, motifs for Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And we found that a good portion of our motifs were actually um, matched to known motifs. Um, and here are some examples um, for three different, all three different species. And um, one, we saw that some of the motifs that we found were conserved across different species. Um, for example, AZF1 here, we found an AZF1 motifs, motif for model strain for all three species. Uh, we also saw that the activation profiles or where these motifs were found were really non-random. In particular, a lot of the time we saw that 
um, these sequence motifs were found close to a transcription start site, which makes sense because you're looking at transcription factor binding motifs. They often occur close to transcription start sites. Um, the next thing that we did was we tried to generate a gene regulatory network from FUNPROS. So we did this by um, looking at which transcription factors were most predictive for different target genes. Um, and this is the network that we generated for Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Um, and when we look at the top five um, transcription factors in terms of out degree or the number of genes that it regulates, we saw that many of the top genes are what are known as master regulators, um, in part particular master regulators of stress response, which makes sense because um, the data set that we use for Saccharomyces cerevisiae was a stress response data set. We also then um, ran modularity detection on our network. And for each module, we took the target genes, ran geoterm analysis, and we found that a lot of the time, the geoterms for a particular module matched the transcription factors that regulate that module. For example, in the late yellow module, um, we found that the target genes had geoterms associated with RNA processing and ribosome biogenesis. And we saw that um, the transcription factors, for example, JJJ1 here has been shown to be involved with 60S um, ribosomal subunit biogenesis. We also saw that SCP1, which is a protein similar to SCP3, um, SCP3 is not as well studied as SCP1, um, but SCP1 has been known to be involved in tRNA splicing. Similar patterns were, saw, uh, were, were seen for the blue module and the brown module. So in conclusion, we found that um, it's possible to predict condition-specific gene expression with high accuracy across um, a bunch of different fungal species, indicating that FUNPROS generalizes as well. We also saw that um, FUNPROS can be applied to predict um, condition-specific gene expression for unseen conditions or previously unseen promoter sequences. We also so showed that FUNPROS can be interpreted to extract biological relevant information um, regarding gene regulation. In the future, we want to extend FarmPros beyond fungi. Um, we also want to incorporate information about mRNA degradation to potentially further improve our predictions. Um, that is all. Again, you can find um, our preprint here on BioArchive. You can also contact me if you have any questions.